Through these tenants, we seek to build not only a competitive environment, but one welcome to players of all interests and skill sets. That's a big part of how we recruit, right? We seek quality over quantity. We don't recruit up based on numbers. We recruit based on community. And I, as a, as a leader, have a philosophy that I want anybody in the guild to thrive no matter what they want to do. It doesn't matter if they're a casual player. It doesn't matter if they're hardcore. I know there's a lot of people out there who think Virtue is a Care Bear guild. You, friends, don't know what you're talking about. And that's great because let them continue to assume. I love it. But we have a very competitive element. We have a very casual element. And you can bridge the gap between the two. It is possible. I've done this a long time. But that that post got a lot of love by Virtue members. And I felt it was important to actually shout out my guild, who supports me, supports this community. Many of them are Pathfinders as well. So shout out to Virtue. You guys are freaking awesome. You rock and great times ahead. In reflection of his oath and the words of his friends, the Pathfinder threw his bag over his shoulder. There before him was one of the divine gateways that had beckoned many of the Cinderborn who had been gathering there. The gateway was bright with a blue aura that bathed the spinning rings. These rings were covered in pulsing blue lines spreading across them like living veins. The center was what looked like a beacon of blue radiating light. The light radiated from a crystal which beckoned them to hope for what may lie on the other side of this gate of destiny. Welcome to Ashes Pathfinders, your dedicated and trusted Ashes of Creation podcast. Join us as we share in the journey that reignites the embers and rekindles the flames in the hearts of those long left to cinder. I'm your host, Phoenix, also known as Simorg. I'm joined today by my returning Pathfinders. Let's welcome back Daedalus. Hello, everyone. And also, our fa <laughs> oh, our favorite little murder bunny, Basil. Hey, <laughs> and welcome back, Half Tilt. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. How are you doing today, guys? I'm good, man. Got to got to make sure I throw Basil under the bus right in the beginning, man. Remember, social bunnies, aka murder bunnies, with murder teeth. Hey, hey, hey. People, look, here, heed my warning. <laughs> Sim is trying to make you all forget that he's going to the dark side. <laughs> you have no evidence to support this. Just because you all say it all the time on this show doesn't mean it's true. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Allegedly. I see you, Sim. I see you. You see nothing. You see nothing. <laughs> Man, everybody, before we get dug in too far, though, we do have to give a big shout out to asheshq.com the home of this podcast this is a community curated website for ashes of creation also a shout out to all of the imperial flames which are supporters here on twitch youtube and patreon thanks so much for keeping this community's flames bolstering greater week after week friends really do appreciate it and uh if you're here watching live at the end of today's podcast i'll be hosting something in the discord for those people who are imperial flames I'm gathering some feedback around some of the stuff and things going on here in the community. Um, also, remember that you can submit questions into the hashtag Ashes Pathfinder channel in this community's Discord over at discord.gg forward slash Simorg. Um, you can also call into the show to leave a message, which we can play. Um, and uh, that's at 1-539-664-6801. Um, you can leave us in the review on iTunes. I think we're at 24 right now. I think we're one away from 25. So if we get some more over there, five-star reviews are greatly appreciated. It helps to bump us up in the algorithm, let people know that this is a legit podcast and, you know, we actually do stuff and things. Um, but yeah, you can do that over on iTunes. And if you leave a message there, we'll, we'll read it live. Um, you can send a message to our mailbag and our Pathfinder grunt will get it to us at some point. That's over at ashespathfinders at gmail.com, friends. And uh, that's it for our spiel to get the show started. I do notice today there's something something going on here with the uh what's going on? Something a little different with the scene. Has anybody else notice a phoenix kind of lurking around that gateway? That's strange. Interesting. I don't know why that would be happening. Um <laughs> curious. It's just a curious set of circumstances, friends. That's all I can say. But uh speculate away. And I'm rhyming today. Look at that. Anyway. That being no said. No way. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes way uh so welcome to everybody here in uh in chat man really is uh really great to see you all it's always a pleasure and uh thanks so much to everybody who we getting the show started today and i uh, had a bunch of resubs uh ash and harold gruntag and quasi thanks for that and gruntag for the bits really appreciate everybody you guys rock um so the gate of destiny man the divine gateways right so i figured a good way to start today's show out in the theme of well the theme of the show would be to talk about our own journeys because for so many people you know i remember talking about this with uh the nathan apom he's a buddy we do the lfm show together and uh he 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 talks about what so many people in the mmorpg genre are doing uh that are waiting around in the genre we're always looking for our next home like it seems like right like so many people in the uh genre, you know that are in the community are burned by you know the developers in the genre it's just a fact that is so much the case and as a result of that so many people are looking for the next you know there's always the ones looking for the next big mmorpg but there's also those who are just looking for a next place to call home or chasing the dragon as he calls it we're all chasing the dragon we're looking for that next just amazing mmorpg experience where you know, we can call it our new our, our home it's a place we log into every day a place we're looking forward to and so for many of us that means stepping through this divine gateway because that is quite literally what happens in game with ashes of creation when you play for the first time you've just stepped through the divine gateway from sanctus into vera and now your adventure begins so for the first time and this is a question i'm posing to my my friends here on the show but i'll also pose it to you in chat and all of you who will listen later uh, and that is what does entering that divine gateway mean for all of us? Uh, for many of us, it's a long awaited step into a new world, both in the game and quite frankly, for many of us looking for that new home. It's the MMO we're hoping for. And for all the ashes fam, you know, we're waiting on ashes. We've already called it our new home. We're waiting to get there. So gentlemen, that's my question to you. What does it mean to you? Stepping through the gate, starting to play the game for the first time. I mean, I'm hoping it'll recapture kind of that first sense of wonder that I had kind of stepping into my first MMO and, you know, being able to community build with like, like-minded like players. I, mean, I think that's kind of the biggest thing uh, for me is just being able to explore something new. It's mm -hmm. It's been so long and like for me as an MMO player that I've really seen something new that I latched onto. Um, you know, I just kind of looking back, uh, you know, wow was really that game for me and, and it continues at some level to be that game as much as there's, you know, definitely things that I would, you know, do differently um, than the developers have done. I, I would say that still, every new expansion kind of captures that sense of wonder and i hope that ashes does the same and and does it in a new universe that i can explore and learn about which mm. has been really important for me hmm. where to begin <laughs> wherever you like to buddy wherever uh, you like to bunny i mean basil sorry <laughs> I guess I guess I, I agree with most of what Dito said, but to add to that, I would also because I like to be chill most of the time. So I must probably be trying to fish with my friends in really cool locations, like just chilling over there, fishing and doing like doing what we want basically. Mm Yeah, um, I, I've never been a part of a new MMO or new game launch before. And what? having been following this game now for, I don't know, six months or whatever, closer to a year, I guess, coming up in a few months here. Um, you know, we've learned a lot about the backstory, about the world. And for me, I am just really looking forward to getting out with everyone, with all the friends I've made here in, in the community, the Ashes fam, and watching us all start our stories together start our adventures together how are we going to go and conquer this new world how are we going to explore it find all its secrets and and just 
see how deep the rabbit hole really goes. Like I, the prospect of the future that we get to spend here and that yeah. this isn't just going to be, you know, a, a 60 hour playthrough and then, okay, I've seen, I've beat the game kind of thing. Like this is going to be years of gameplay ahead of us and discoveries and fresh content. And I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to take it one step at a time. I don't, there's no destination. And that's the beautiful part is there's nothing to race towards. Enjoy. It's about enjoying the journey. Yeah. I, I can't, I, I'm looking forward to being there for the entire journey. Oh yeah. So, wow, man, I had no idea. You've never actually been part of a, a launch like this. Oh no, man. It's... One, like, I've been there for expansions oh. when they've been released in games, but for a fresh MMO launch, this is new. I've been there like a, a new Call of Duty or Diablo drops or something. I've been there for oh, that, yeah. but that's not the same no. as something like this. It just it doesn't compare. Dude, I'm going to tell you, man, You maybe other people have told you this, and I, I'll nerd out about this all day. It is freaking cool, dude. It is such a good experience, in my opinion. Like, mm. I, I think it's such a beautiful thing, dude, to just watch how people are, like, excited. Like, all of those first moments... You just, you don't get those, like you get stuff like that in RPGs and adventure games and all that stuff. Like when people are discovering the story for the first time, but man, an MMORPG, oh, it's a <laughs> whole different ball game, dude. Cause you get, you got the server experience, right? So you got, and Ashes is going to provide one that's very unique in that each server story will be uniquely different, same world, different reality in a sense of how things are playing out. But man, it is like such a good time because just the, the the first moments of like things being unlocked or people completing quest chains and like that interactivity between the community of like exploration and like discovery and oh man you just don't get that anywhere else man you just get that in an mmo man and uh ashes is gonna i confidently believe it's gonna deliver that tenfold in comparison to other games not because the other games are worse in any way but because of the way that Ashes is designed, it's designed in a way that that will be so so varied, you know, not only player to player, but server to server. So that's just going to or community to community. I mean, node to node. I mean, there's, there's so many la like layers, man. So for me to you, it's dude, it's there's nothing like it. And it's when you talk about enjoying the ride. Yeah, that's that's what I'm looking forward to is that those first moments, the history that we all sort of are invested in in the beginning because people then on the server would start to talk about like, oh man, you remember back in, in the first month when we were all leveling and this happened? This dragon spawned and murdered like an entire node of people that tried to fight it because they weren't even up to level or something. I mean, who knows, dude? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so many good things. I'm so stoked. I'm so, I'll nerd out about this all day, dude. All day. Absolutely. And, and yeah, the different servers. It's mm -hmm. almost like an alternate dimension. Yeah. Just wrote at the Ashes world. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. what's happening in this dimension on this timeline and so on and so forth. It's going to be cool. Speaking, speak, yeah, speaking of, of which, talking about Ashes, I just got to say something. And this is a bit of a tease and it's totally a little bit of self promo here. But I've been working on something. Nobody's done it yet. But oh, man, I'm kind of nerding out that nobody's done this yet, but I found some hidden gems that people haven't used yet in the Ashes world. I found them. I organized them. I put the pieces together, and in the next week, y'all are going to get to see them. That's all I got to say, but I'm like nerding so hard about this. I'm like, how's nobody done this yet? I'm like, I'm shocked. I'm absolutely shocked. So I'm going to nerd out and do it, man. So I've spent a good deal of time, like over two days in the past week, I am a tease grunt tag and you all know this about me and I don't <laughs> feel bad about it. It is. It's who I am. Accept me, accept me, <laughs> right? Witness me. No, I'm just kidding. Not, not that dramatic. Spill the beans. Sim. I what can't, do you know? I can't dude. It's too good, dude. It's too good, but I'm nerding so hard because it's, it's actually pretty rich and it's flown under the radar for years. And I kind of, in a way, felt like they had to know when they put that out there, like somebody would take it and do something with it, and nobody's done it. I'm like, what? I'm but really I say nothing. Big now. I'm excited. I'm like, dude, I'm so stoked. I've got 23 pages put together so far, cataloging all of the stuff and things that tie together. And I'm excited, man, because it's going to be this week, and poor East is going to be editing his poor 
poor ass off this next week because I'm putting him to work. But it's going to be beautiful, and I'm stoked. I can't wait to share it. <sighs> and with that being said, there was... We're talking about stepping through the gateway. Now, Intrepid Studios on Twitter, uh, on their Ashes of Creation Twitter. <laughs> the ACC been chat. I haven't had food in four days to help. Bullshit. Don't go tell lies, man. Right? He's don't listen to him. He's he's well he's taken care of. I almost said he's well taken care of. I was like, not nah. I mean he's taken care of. It's fair. <laughs> just give me, I see you, Sim. But look. Uh anyway. So the question that they posed was back in the day, it was like it was earlier this week, and they were talking about see like biomes, right? There was a question around biomes, and I thought it was good. It's a perfect segue uh into this topic because you step through uh the gateway. Well, What's one of the things you're going to experience? Biomes. Different territories. So biomes. Like, what's your favorite biome in an MMORPG and why? What makes it your favorite, guys? And this is the same to all of you listening or watching. For me, there's there's two for very different reasons. And kind of going back to... It's actually what made me think of this, honestly, is the fact that um, Blizzard announced uh, Burning Crusade Classic. And I would have to say, in terms of, like, biomes, Nagrand, for the reason that it just it just felt like home gotcha. and peaceful and all of that. <laughs> and then Zanger Marsh, because it was so different than anything else that I'd ever seen in an MMO at the time. I mean, I'm... There's definitely been, you know, progression since then, obviously. Uh, but mm -hmm. that was, to me, like the the most, like, just uses of color, just shape. It was just so different. And I really enjoyed it because it just made it feel like an alien world. And and that was the intent. So, oh, yeah, man. That's, that's my... Yeah, before before you guys add, I gotta just say, can can anybody else explain something to me? I mean, you're gonna say cuz magic and that's fine, but I like that zone too in the grand, it was great, right? But I just want did anybody else ever wonder like where's the water coming from those like floating rocks up in the sky where the waterfalls are falling? Anybody else go like does it ever run out? Like Sim, magic water. Come on, bro. I know you're gonna say magic cuz. Okay, fair enough. Continue. I'm sorry, segue, whatever. <laughs> muting myself now tilted you go first <laughs> all right um for, for me I, i'm kind of torn i love uh like mountainy terrains with snow and, and, and some evergreen forest on them where it can be kind of treacherous but also just really beautiful to, to walk through and going down the mountain into more tropical coastal type as well. I, 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 I'm from the Northwest, so I, I live five minutes away from mountains and five minutes away from the beach. And it, it's, it, it's that type of environment. It's a really quick transition, multiple biomes. And, and I love that. I love being on the coast and I love being right near mountains and snow and just everything in between. I, not a fan of desert areas because well the color scheme just gets really stale really fast for me but I, it's, I i love that foresty the dark greens and the blends and all that the wildlife that you typically see in those areas nice see now you just made an enemy <laughs> Murder by I, love, I love desert biomes but not nah, the, not in the sense because because i understand what uh, half tilt means by how still it can be. I've seen MMOs where it's just plain sand, and and that's that's where how like that's the biome basically. But the thing is, people don't know how to represent deserts really properly because you're so it's supposed to be a lot of sand. Yes, so you're supposed to have hidden gems here and there. Even in high mountains, you're supposed to find snow. You're supposed to find Cool oasis is here and there, but but in MMOs they don't really um they don't really do that. <laughs> so Alakir Desert and, and Elder Scrolls Online did a pretty good job with the deserts, I thought. Yeah. But I'm I'm just gonna say, Basil, like I've gotta respectfully, by the way, disagree with you. And here's why. 
I feel like deserts are great for one thing, right? Plenty of resource to exfoliate yourself. There's that. Mm -hmm. And I think the second one, <laughs> look, I spent some time in the desert in the army, right? Like I spent a little bit of time in the desert, man. Um, feeling like the sun's jumping up from the ground to scorch my eyes. Not my idea of a good time. Walking around and feeling like I could sink. Not my idea of a good time. Um, having sand literally intruding eye sockets, even with goggles on. Not my idea of a good time. So you are not doing a good job. You've got to convince me of what a hidden gem okay, okay. is going to be. First of all, I need to ask you, where did you exactly go? And what season was it? <laughs> I can't confirm or deny that. Also sand. Fine, fine. I assume it's summer, though. <laughs> you can assume fair. Through your eyes. <laughs> you can assume fair. You can fair. You can assume that. Uh, what's it called? Yeah, but like... Oh, and I almost forgot this one. Scorched in the middle of the day, and then as soon as the sun sets, you feel like you're freezing, even though it's still 90 degrees. Not might have a good time. Hmm. These are the experiences I wish to share with you as a cautionary tale. So, okay, it's, it's murder, definitely bunny. murder bunny. Murder <laughs> bunny. Okay. Just, okay, I'm just okay. kidding. There are there are a Ooh. lot of places with sand and desert that are pleasant. I'm sure I haven't been there. Here's here's how I can convince you. Yes, in summer it's hell hell on earth, but when it's spring or what's it called winter, that's when it really blossoms. Because in winter, it's the the entire weather changes like you would go below zero but without ice or snow mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and that's when like cool beautiful flowers that's when it actually opens because it has this specific time that you can only see them so what i'm hearing wow. is deserts are great they're beautiful they're amazing you should definitely i'm a proponent of them for one season out of the year <laughs> Fair, fair. No, no. Uh, two seasons, two seasons. <laughs> You're like, no, no, no. Two. It's at least fifty percent of a year. Come on. <laughs> fair, fine. And usually in summer, if you go to the open areas, it's pretty windy. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. That's how I got it. My eye sockets, bro. <laughs> and I had goggles on, yo. I had goggles. I'm sorry. I digress. That was a sidebar moment, everybody on the show. It is about biome, so we technically aren't off topic here. -ish. Yeah. Okay, the, the second the second biome that I sure. mostly enjoy is is forests. You just, yes. Because you get yes. to see a lot of plants and varieties yeah. and you get to see even the tunnels are hidden and caves and whatnot. The third one is uh, underwater biomes. Mm. Because those are usually very, very magical in color and in creativity wise. Ooh. Yeah, definitely. That's, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's probably why I like I was like Zanger Marsh because it kind of mm -hmm. had it had that feel like of underwater life. Dead, yeah. Some, some of it, but yeah, that's really, really good points there. And big powerful mushrooms. They're like just sprouted up like super high that you could build on too, because that happened. <laughs> Zanger Marsh yeah. reminds me of that Steven Spielberg movie, The Mists, with all oh. the big <laughs> creatures roaming around and the giant towering mushrooms and all that and it just feels something pretty surreal it's, it's very supernatural i like that feeling of it for sure so we talked about biomes right fair on the chat said i like the big fantasy green so i think we think biomes a lot and we think about biomes that we you know maybe we like like forest node type stuff i'm a big fan of forests with like waterfalls lush lush forests not so much more like wooded you know, like North American sort of forests. It, that's my kind of jam. I, I really enjoy that. But uh, yeah, like Perron said, a big fantasy, giant trees with pink flowers along some nice lush green grass with some glowy stuff everywhere. So like ambient lighting. I mean, you know, like under realm sort of stuff could be a big vibe for some people. You know, you can see that. And I mean, you've got the Black Reach area and the Elder Scrolls kind of has some vibes like that. There's other games that have it as well. Um, you had it in WoW as well, you know, in certain places. Um, yeah, talking about a lot of water for some people, really enjoying like flowing rivers, um, you know, and yeah, there's just a lot of beautiful scenery that you can have. Um, Ashen Herald says, imagine Tim using the word exfoliate on an Ashes podcast, and, you know, because they don't really have to imagine that now, do they, friends? 
<laughs> yeah, like Lady Tilton chat says, uh, like that's my dream backyard. Yeah, like I absolutely love like flowing waterfalls and little like some rocks. You know, really grassy, beautiful big trees. You know, you got like the wind blowing. You've got like nature kind of calling, like birds flying around. You know, and then every so often you get this elder dragon that drops down, and tries to blow everything up, and then that's the end of the great fight. <laughs> adventure and then you find something dangerous and it's like let's conquer this behemoth or whatever so yeah beautiful but we had a topic friends a topic which is a little new it seems like the ashes of creation starting a new series of discussion topics did you saw that they called their guild gatherings and this is the first mm -hmm. one they put number one this was posted on the forums shared this week and this one's a good one. This one's probably going to take up a good bit of time today. And it's a fair point because it's a, it's a great topic. And it's kind of, I actually really like that they picked this um, because recruitment and retention is the topic. And so I'm going to read what they pose as a question. What guild tools are most helpful to you for recruitment and retention, both in game and outside of a game? Of course, our guild here, Spearhead us community, right? A lot of homies in chat, Virtue. Shout out to my homies in Virtue, the Virtue Order. What? 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 We did a really nice post. And we talked about it. They posted this on Twitter. <clears throat> and we, you know, kind of made a post there and, and kind of responded to it and kind of gave a little bit about who we are and what, you know, how we foster this sense of, uh, you know, kind of helpfulness and recruitment. Uh, kind of like how we approach that whole recruitment element, but the retention element specifically is the one that I think is going to be really interesting to chat about today. Look at all them hammers in chat. What is that? Virtue, 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 <laughs> virtue. That's right. Virtue. Look at all the virtue in chat. I love it. Yeah. Proud of that community, man. By the way, we are recruiting, get in touch with Wizzy McNasty in discord if you're interested, but that's it. That's the question. So both in and out of a game, right? I feel like the in-game element, there's TL, if there's another virtue member. So in-game, out of game, retention and recruitment tools, go. Oof. No pressure, guys. No, no pressure. Take your time, you know? <laughs> as far as tools go, I feel like Discord is incredible yeah. for that. They got so many plugins <laughs> and bots and ways that you can assign responsibilities to people to be able to manage a server or parts of a server uh, more than I am aware of, but it, it really facilitates a lot of that. It's mobile, it's on PC as a separate app outside of a browser. So there's so many ways to access it and for people to kind of come together, whether you're signing up for an event or just having a, a random off topic chat or introducing yourself, whatever it is, it really brings a, a lot of out of the game focus mm. um, and, and brings you together outside of the game. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, to me, like, you know, old school MMO player, but definitely would not, um, would not, would not want to have a community without having discord integration so i'm i know the devs have talked about this so i think discord integration would be like fantastic right to be able to experience the game and have that access i think that is extremely um extremely helpful i think also being able to create a guild space but do it in such a way where you can engage your members and like maybe building out certain things i think what now now the game isn't necessarily, I would say, super popular, but one of the things that I really liked about another AOC, Age of Conan, was mm -hmm. being able to build out your city. And I remember a very small group of us doing all the stuff and things to actually get that going. And when you finally got a chance to, you know, walk out into your own city, um, that was a, a really awesome experience. And I know we're definitely gonna get something like that with nodes but like a guild hall something where you can host like guild events and we're not i'm not just talking about you know having maybe dungeon run nights or raid nights i mean those are you know pretty standard like things that maybe have people be more creative or 
you know, share a little bit of themselves. I think that would be kind of some great tools. So anything that Intrepid can do to facilitate that, I think would be a really good thing. And again, reinforce that kind of player community pillar um, that they're going for. Oof. Okay, so you kind of have to acknowledge the generic type of ways of people recruiting, which is technically through the Discord what they're doing now. And basically, people just uh, put their own guild on the, the Ashes Discord, or they go to the forums and they would post their own guilds over there. Um, I remember they also once tried doing a guild fair. Uh, yeah. for multiple uh, multiple um, areas. Like, if you're in Europe, you would go and see that. If you're in North America, you can also go see that. Um, I wish they could bring that again because it actually influences a lot on people. Mm -hmm. And uh, just hearing them and how they speak and what they do is, uh, is kind of a big deal for a lot of people. <laughs> Yeah, agreed. So that's one way of them doing it. But yeah, mostly I agree with uh, Tilted and uh, Daedalus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know, one of the things that I know we got, we actually got like a bit of a discussion. Uh, we got a little bit of, well, feedback rather from uh steven when he was here on the show and one of the questions we specifically asked was we get in a calendaring game that's a big one man that is a huge resource because when i think of retention specifically whenever i think of retention my thoughts kind of immediately go to what what do you think activity events. at events exactly events activity interactivity and so from my perspective, the best resource is going to be keeping people engaged. Now, you know, back in the day, you know, it used to be a little bit at one point we had a, a guild website <clears throat> and since then done away with it, done away with the second discord, too, because, well, it's just a lot easier to house our community and the community that I already run because of, you know, Nitro subs and all these other elements that just it's like pull your resources in one place. It's just smarter. Right. Um, and you can do that with roles, you have separate channels and all that. Um, so it's like really cool because, you know, discord, like, you know, you've got chat channels, you've got roles, you've got all the same types of tools that I used to use on the, the website we used. And I felt like, you know, I feel like the voice comms and since discord has chat channels, that really is useful, right? Cause not only is it voice, it's also chat channels, which is a big part of why I would use the forums and a guild website to begin with outside of the game. The other one was guild calendars right because guild calendars and notify people of events that are going on in game that people in the guild have set up it could be things they can sign up for so people can sign up for it tentative or you know commit to it 100 percent or whatever and so you've got like you know and the other thing is is the calendars is really useful not just for the fact that guilds can do that but there's also in-game events that might be going on seasonal things um which helps the leadership what like make events around those things as well but yeah, activities and events, a really big element. And one of the things that, you know, Ashes is having is a calendar. For me, that's huge. Because if you keep people engaged and you keep them interacting and you give them things to do together, well, then they're more likely to continue communicating and investing their time, right? When there's, I mean, we've all seen it. Like it, back in the day, there was a period, at least from my perspective in the games I played, where you would jump in and people were chatting in guild chat and the voice channel or sorry, the text channels in game, they'd be in the voice comms, they'd be on the forums, they're doing stuff. And now I feel like we've kind of got more to a place where people don't chat via text in game as much. I still do, but I think a lot of people don't. And so you kind of lose that element. Then if you don't have a calendar, you kind of lose that element. And so that starts to put people into a place, I think, just in my mind, of not being as connected. So anything you can do to bridge that, that gap that kind of through circumstances just kind of been created over, you know, the culture of MMORPGs, I think the better. Um, and I think th things like that are, yeah, really mm -hmm. good, really good for that. But, you know, also I think anybody listening, I want to know your ideas. I'm also really curious where they're going to go with these, the series, you know, like what are some of the things they're going to, talk about i could see guild halls being on there and certainly daedalus brought that up as well 
Um, but you know what I think is what kind of in-game event- events do you all? But you got something, Faisal? It looked like you got before, thought brewing. Before we jump to that topic, sure. I just wanted to say that um, like, I think the amount of zigging that's going to happen in this specific MMO is going to be a lot less because of the whole node system that they're trying to provide. So I feel there's going to be an influx of guilds that are going to happen. So finding a guild, I think a lot of people have a lot of variety of guilds so people can actually browse around and see and don't uh, hurry on the decision because uh, there's a lot of opportunities (laughs) that can be taken. At least that's what I think. Mm -hmm. That too, I hope. Because a lot of players, you know, they're not going to be on Twitch. They're not going right. to be accessing True. the forums, um, things like that to sure. either promote their own guild or looking for a guild. So there has to be good in-game ways of recruitment. Recruitment's the first step. Obviously, retention is the bigger part of that picture. Yeah. Um, but I hope to see within nodes, maybe from like stage two or stage three and above, there is like a post board within the town or the village or whatever it is where you can put up a guild charter just saying like, Hey, this guild is recruiting members. This is what we're about and what we're looking for. This is what we do, where we hang out. Maybe not where we hang out because that could be an advertisement for, uh, (laughs) for, for some war or some sabotage, but you know, just to put something out there where people could then like PM or mail or reach out to an officer of the guild through that uh, method and have a chat a bit more maybe hop on discord and have a conversation or something like that but there needs to be something in game that where guilds can advertise and people can be like hey i'm this person and i'm looking for a guild and put that up somewhere so a guild leader could come by and be like oh yeah well, let's grab you yeah so um before we move forward this is a part of the thing y'all don't get to see when you're listening to it or you're catching it later on uh youtube yeah, so Drake could talk with 10 gifted subs in the community. Got to shout out Snoop, Snoop Loops for the tier one sub. Vintharian with 1500 bits. Um, Hids with the sub. Quasi with the sub. Gruntag with 500 bits and a sub. And the Ashen Herald here with the sub, man. I appreciate all of you all for supporting this show and this community. Thank you very much. Um, got a comment here from Psychophobic. So many times... Uh, have been over and over done with games, uh, but it was my guild that kept me having fun in game. The guild was what kept me logging in. I love that. Yeah. Love it. I, f- I feel like that's something where most people who have played games for more than a few years have been in that scenario. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's about the community. Yeah, the thing is, too, is like, you know, it's one of the things, because you've got, like, content. I'm not going to say content drought or, like, whatever, but you get a period typically traditionally where you're kind of like going through the motions and you're, you know, playing and everything. And then you get to like a point where it's like, we don't have anything to do, which I don't think is going to be much of a problem in ashes. But when you're getting on to play with your homies, I mean, it doesn't really matter what you do, man. You can pick something, go on an adventure together, help somebody out with something. I mean, that in itself is a good time for me. It's like I jump on and I roll with my homies. And before we move on, speaking of my homies and speaking of, that post on Twitter, I am going to do a self promo for virtue because they're freaking awesome. And I love them. And I'm going to read what we posted to the Twitter, which it says our order is founded on specific and refined core tenants that promote respectful and interactive environment within our ranks. Through these tenants, we seek to build not only a competitive environment, but one welcome to players of all interests and skill sets. That's a big part of how we recruit, right? We seek quality over quantity. We don't recruit up based on numbers. We recruit based on community. And I, as a, as a leader have a philosophy that I want anybody in the guild to thrive, no matter what they want to do. It doesn't matter if they're a casual player. It doesn't matter if they're hardcore. I know there's a lot of people out there who think virtue is a care bear guild. You friends don't know what you're talking about. And that's great because let them continue to assume. I love it but we have a very competitive element. We have a very casual element and you can bridge the gap between the two. It is possible. I've done this a long time, but that, that post got a lot of love by virtue members. And I felt it was important 
to actually shout out my guild who supports me, supports this community. Many of them are Pathfinders as well. So shout out to Virtue. You guys are freaking awesome. You rock and great times ahead. With that being said, speaking of great times, what type of in-game events really work to allow guilds to thrive? What are some examples for us that are ones that we've enjoyed the most within our own communities or guilds in the past, gentlemen? This one might be a little bit of a, a tangent, but it, sure. it's related. Um, I know they've talked in the past about having some mentorship type of mechanics in the game. I would really love to see um, this mechanic enable mentorship nights or mentorship weekends for guild senior guild members to play with you know junior guild members or people that are maybe catching up with the game since you know they may not have a lot of time to play i would love to see something like that because that's a would to me would be a really strong way to community build and not only just doing mm -hmm. it from a like you know leveling perspective but also maybe having like an apprenticeship type of thing for crafting too. Uh, Cause those type of events, when, you know, the community gets together, does something, even if it's in, you know, a bunch of small groups, it creates camaraderie. Um, so any opportunities, you know, that guilds have to create that sense of camaraderie in an event, I think would be great. I would love to see some things that aren't necessarily PVE or PVE, p related just something that's more community related like you know opportunities you know to do like i don't know plays or have like you know people tell stories just like in a you know not necessarily just in a tavern setting but you know having some sort of performance things you could do i think that would be again a way to build community inside and of a guild and also being able to recruit people too because you got those opportunities to be able to do things like that. The thing is with the apprenticeship program, it's a little bit tricky because you have two communities where I tell you, yeah, it's a great idea. And you have the other people that will tell you, but there is a consequence to that where people might try to use the apprenticeship program to have a shortcut. <laughs> Right. to what they want. Um, so it's kind of, I don't want to be that dude, but I guess I have to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah, I know that we're, we're not supposed to be playing the game of life in an MMORPG. And I understand <laughs> that. But it's a really hard balance. <laughs> to maintain and i think this one can slide i guess <laughs> i would agree that there's definitely opportunity for exploitation with the system so i would say definitely test you know it, it needs to be tested in in and mm -hmm. out and not be a way to power level people right because definitely i could see that happening or a way to perhaps really skip content i would just like to have some opportunity to be able to uh, at the end of the day give people an opportunity to play with their friends right that's what an mm -hmm. mmo is really at the core about it's not about getting to the end it's not about collecting all the stuff right what kept a lot of people really engaged in mmos and still does is the community so anything they can do to facilitate that you know potential downsides aside um i think would be would be really really good mm -hmm. definitely so we you know daedalus had mentioned kind of made a, a a point a pointer rather to talking about guild halls and fortresses well i'm saying fortresses but guild halls now you know in terms of retention i kind of wonder if guild hall specifically could be beneficial in that regard as well um we already know like taverns like we we know some very uh, important uses for taverns but when we think mm -hmm. about things like guild halls we already know like there's initiatives in game where we can you know maybe steal something from a guild you know have guild wars and stuff like that right there's guilds that are going to have you know be in conflict they're going to fight each other 
their guild halls. They can go sack their own other guild halls. And then, of course, fortresses exist as a result of what? Well, guilds that are stronger, guilds that have achieved more. I mean, they're more fortified. They have a fortress. I mean, if you have, like, some of the more dominant guilds that do in-game progression, have achieved a lot of different things, they're going to have a, a much stronger guild hall. It'll be more like a fortress. And so there's initiatives like stealing things from a guild hall, things like that. You know, we know espionage and things of those nat uh, that nature are going to be in Ashes of Creation. Um, but when we kind of break back that up a bit, and we talk about just getting down to the the bare bones of a guild as a community, and we think of things like retention, for example, or recruitment, or even your day to day workings in a guild, we think of taverns and how useful those are going to be. I mean, so many things like games, boards. What are some things that when we, and this is to all of you listening, watching, and us here on the show right now, when you think of a guild hall or fortress, what makes them more than just a freehold housing element? You know, like what can really work to aid in a guild thriving outside of what we know? So outside the box a little bit. I was thinking about this a little bit before the show, and mm -hmm. something that really came to mind is... Uh, you, you we've had games where you have like a staging area there, there there's there was a, a couple of call of duties ago i think there was this like a staging area you'd go in on your campaign missions where you could interact with different areas of of your room and either customize your builds or see different pieces of information set up your mm -hmm. missions and get everything all set up having something interactive like that in in your guild hall where you can go and see achievements see your guild schedules for con for rating see if there's like a guild bank um a, a post board for hey we're looking for these crafting materials or these finished goods and just a whole bunch of just just a, a community center for that guild and everything is kind of housed and staged there and you can just walk in there as uh, somebody who just joined the guild or as the guild leader and have access to all of this information. Now, obviously you might not be able to take everything out of the guild bank as a fresh person in the guild, but you know, something along those lines, I think I would love to see um, in our guild halls. Cool. Yeah. I, I would definitely like to see not that. So in so far that it would take away from a node itself, but being able to almost create like a mini node in terms of your guild hall and i think there's a lot of chat that you know is talking about that being able to mm -hmm. kind of have different services or something where you can really have people invest their time to do and also just from a pve or pvp element what type of fortifications can you do like what can you have like guild defenses or traps or something right that helps you protect that guild hall so anything that i you know that can engage players to have a reason to visit the guild hall other than you know social aspects because i think you're going to end up creating those social outlets by having some of those services there but not it mm -hmm. have it be you know balanced out with what might be required in a node mm -hmm. as well so that way there's people aren't necessarily just congregating in their guild freehold they're you know they've got some options to be able to do that. So that would be, I guess, my, uh, my take. Hmm. Okay, I got crazy, wacky ideas. Yeah. First of all, catapults. A lot of them. <laughs> catapults. <laughs> Two, this is a little bit more realistic, real, realistic but <laughs> what if they took, like, the biggest guild in a node and try to fuse that with the mayor building. In a sense, it would be at the center of the city. And uh, what's it called? It'll have its own special aspects. Like you'll be able to have more defenses, as David said, uh, maybe special defenses as well. And uh, since it's like one of the biggest uh, guilds, they'll be more tied to, to, pr to protect that certain area. Mm -hmm. I think that would be really cool, but it would have <laughs> to only work if the mayor is a member of that guild. Mm -hmm. Maybe. True. So got a lot of points in chat, and this is just going to kind of fuel the fire of this conversation. So Ventharian, 
If it's a fortress, actual fortifications, I want to use positions to take on other guilds who want to try. I've actually got a few things written down here I was thinking of, and some of those were um, things like emblems, vendors, uh, uh, fortifications. But also got some more from other people here. Faron says a good marketplace, or a guild marketplace rather, banking services, the ability to build an actual guild castle. Um, we got uh, Denor here says storage or a vault is a big one for me. Um, that'd be really useful. I mean, guild banks are going to be really useful. So theater, TLF has got guild broker auction board, crafting stations, bank storage, meeting area, staging area, guild work orders. Um, we got Snoop says, I'd be interesting to see how many guilds are influential in a node at a time like guilds uh, that have contributed over a certain amount and the development um, guild work orders from psychophobic um, Cheryl Scream and trebuchets multiple times. She, she really wants trebuchets. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see about that. Cheryl, for sure. <laughs> and then Dell says, um, actually, yeah, right here talking about guild stash with items left by uh, more advanced players and you can exchange merits for items. If you want to advance, want to advance faster. Um, of course you should not be able to, you know, make it a way to progress. Um, and items in part of the game, but just kind of some way to help to kind of like, you know, have some sort of a mutual trading element there for like, you know, your community. So think now there's a game I can think of where I've seen a lot of these things. That's Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 specifically has got just a plethora of things. One of the things I've liked about that is you could essentially kind of select different I mean, they're, they're definitely instanced there. You know, they're not really on plots. It's just more of like, it's kind of like you purchase, you, you essentially, you purchase and get a specific um, uh, guild hall. Kind of like in, I'm thinking, I think Arcage kind of did that. Final Fantasy did that as well. Um, but, you know, you go and you purchase this like specific environment and it's got its own aesthetics and everything. And then in there, you can customize it for your guild. And in Guild Wars 2, you could do things like go in and use vendors. You could go in and get these buffs from a specific NPC. Some of the buffs would be like for XP. Um, for player progression XP, you get XP for like your crafting professions. Um, you get XP for like, um, I don't even remember if it was actually crafting professions. I'm just kind of going off the wall. I know one was for XP uh, for PvP stuff. Um, or maybe it was like PvP. Oh, it was like PvP progress XP, right, for your ranks, which was an account thing in Guild Wars 2. But the, there were some other ones I can't remember specifically. Those two I am sure about, though. Um, yeah, and then you had, like, you know, flasks and things of that nature you could go and you could purchase. Um, you know, in Ashes of Creation, we know that guild halls, you'll be able to use the emblem kind of printing system to use, like, your custom emblems and use that for, like, banners and things of that nature. Um, but, you know, I think when you think of retention, having enough space in the guild hall to actually put on an event. Now, Guild Wars 2, you could do that. You could actually have events in there. And you could do all kinds of stuff, right? It wasn't really small. It was actually a... You had a pretty good amount of space. And you could do things related to RP. I mean, people that like to maybe gather around... On, I know Virtue, we do we do guild meetings. And, I mean, you know, in the future, I'd like guild meetings to actually be in a guild hall. That'd be awesome. To be able to put on events there. And actually have the players there. And, you know, potentially, like you know, do like giveaway type stuff, you know, for people that maybe, you know, engage in like little guild activities that are going on during that time, time frame, you know, they kind of win something or whatever, just for fun, you know, nothing other than just for fun. Um, and I think things like that are really great. And, you know, but when you think of guild halls and usefulness, yeah, something more than just a space to work out of and just the space to say is ours. Um, and all of the examples from chat and from you all, I think we're really good examples of that. Um, definitely something I'm hoping that as they are doing these guild gathering discussions, that maybe they'll start to elaborate on more specifics for those types of things as well. As they're getting feedback from the player base, I think would be really awesome. Um, Absolutely. So piggybacking off of that, then what are things related to guild functions in a game you wouldn't want to see someone out there's probably got some hmm. i've got one specifically people may or may not like it but i can lead i can lead with it 
I'll lead with it. I usually wait to go last, go but I'll it. lead with it. I actually don't like the idea of, and some people might not like this, but I actually do not like the idea of in-game XP boosts of any kind. Or the, whether it's for reputations, progression of uh, artisanship, anything. And I don't, I actually don't want that tied into a guild. I don't want that because I think of that and I think of this reference point we talked about right here on this channel this week. And some of the people out here remember it. That was, you remember, and this is just an example of what I think is a not to do thing. It would be a shame in my mind if someone just joins a guild to get the stuff they've unlocked. And in Cataclysm for World of Warcraft, this was just such a sad time. Like in theory, I remember them going, here's the things your guilds can have when you level up. They added rank structure to the guild, progression to the guild, experience. Now experience for your rank within the guild was already there. Like you go from like, uh, you know, to like honored, revered to exalted, you know, which is like kind of the structure for reputations in that game in general um, with NPC factions and things of that nature. But the thing that was like, it was just a damn shame was like, you had these like Zerg guilds essentially that were like super in-game progression. And then you had the ones that were really itty bitty. And then you had the ones in between. And so the guilds that were like, had just a ton of people, super active, um, they would level their ranks up. And you got stuff like guild teleportation and summoning and things like that. And these like perks that actually like helped you in other areas as well. And all of that was, you know, I mean, that wasn't really so bad but there were these shops that you got as well. It was like the guild vendors. You could unlock pets and things like that. And you had uh, tabards and all these things, which is cool. But the way I found that it ended up negatively impacting the player base, in my opinion, is that you would have a lot of people that just wanted the stuff they could get. And so they join a guild to get the stuff or only join a guild because it had access to the stuff. So now it's more about the stuff you're going to get than the community you're thriving and building or engaged in. So anything like that for me is a no, no. And that includes additional XP and things of that nature. But anyway, that's just my little soapbox moment. That's where I kind of stand on it. Not saying my thoughts are the only thoughts that matter. Just my opinion. And to I, add to that, yeah. I also hated the system of where um, Elder Scrolls Online when you had three guilds in your skill tree that if you if you increase them you would gain certain abilities oh, yeah. like the fire the fighters guild the mages guild and I forgot the third one which one was the third one uh, uh, mages guild? well there was uh, undaunted undaunted mages and yeah the undaunted guild. yeah that's the one yeah. like that was didn't make any sense to me at all <laughs> just the fact that oh okay I'm just gonna do uh, their quests. And level level them up and gain new abilities as supposedly guilds, and I was like, nah, doesn't fit at all. Um, so that that's the only thing that I didn't like in Guild Wars Two. That system supposed to like, and I think Guild that's Wars really Sorry, important. Other, other point. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a really important point, considering that smaller guilds are going to have more guild skills or guild points to us allocate to skills mm, yeah that that we we're not inherently giving them like leveling boosts and other perks like that it, it should affect it should be something more so to level the playing field between a small guild versus a large guild in a guild battle that type of sure. thing so it, it, it's not like okay this guy's like you, you, your small guild guild leader is like fighting a raid boss because he's so strong or everybody who's in the guild gets an extra 10% experience or to their crafting or whatever. That doesn't help balance um, the guild play out. So as long as we avoid that type mm. of um, guild point status, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Sim. I don't think any type of like boost to Brap experience etc and i just think that doesn't have a place especially in um in a game like ashes of creation there's just so many ways that can be exploited yeah. right um, i think you know have to you make 
a good point too, right? Is there's a, a finite number of skill points you can spend as a guild leader. So you can choose to increase the size of your guild or you can choose to get perks. So I do hope that that type of system does help kind of um, level the playing field as well. Um, you know, personally, I think, um, you know, having that level of choice and trade-off and risk and reward will help balance this out. I just hope there is a lot of thought put into, you know, the types of things you can select so that it doesn't become, oh, well, your guild didn't select these four skills, so they're not, you know, the right guild for me versus it being, hey, I really like your community, I want to join, right? right? Or, you know, just being able to give people some options and that there isn't necessarily any wrong choices, but at least it's, you know, giving some variety to different guilds that might want to focus on crafting versus PvE versus PvP, etc. So anything to do to kind of keep the variety out there, um, but not turn it into, I need XP buff and or rep buff in order to join your guild. 25 of your 25 raiders don't have leatherworking to throw war drums out you're wrong and you're not coming in Man. yeah exactly right mm. <laughs> so some chat in here in chat is like like guild benefits to be small like us uh, from happy meal like what if the first time you go to the guild hall each day got a little snack pack you take out in your adventure for the day something like that yeah that's great mm. you know what i mean maybe you bump into members there and you interact a little bit and you hang out uh troll says you know maybe the guild bonuses are only active for events having uh guild members uh, with combat perks fighting a solo uh, with no perks would be a bad situation yeah i think the perk system in general is like something that's gonna they're gonna be cautious with how that's used and how that works exactly um i think something else would be cool is like having um you know one thing that happens in the Elder scrolls online is like you can get like your housing right you got housing you can and in guilds like even even we in virtue we've got you know, not a lot of us play that game. I do play it, you know, and I play it occasionally. And when I'm on there, like, you know, we, I was for a while there building up these crafting stations. So one of the benefits was that people could contribute, drop crafting stations, you get them attuned to different gear sets. So you could go in there and you could go into your guild hall and everybody's, you know, combined their resources and they put together like, you know, crafting stations and things of that nature. So they can all go there, hit their bank up, have a merchant to sell stuff to, you know, then you get like these like target dummies that you can go and practice your DPS on and you got all these things and it like gives a reason to like, you know, go to the same hub because it's like your guild hub. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, there's uh, right here from Snoop says the perks for that significant large guilds uh, could just form several small guilds that coordinate on Discord. Anyways, yeah, it's true. A lot of people have talked about that for sure. Um, so. Uh, there was one other point I didn't want to like miss though. I think it was coming from where's it at? Pretty sure. Oh, this one right here. Like to see a guild mentorship system from Psychophobic instead of an XP boost. Give veteran members a reason to go back to previous zones to help guildies, which is something the mentorship system is gonna do. Seeing it tie in, you know what else is like a really would be really cool is like I I would think I think it would actually be really cool to like maybe take something like a reputation system. Mm -hmm. and make it to where what you unlock based on what you work within your guild to accomplish gives you like titles but you only have them in that guild and it would be cool if like it was almost like this title and this is just something i thought of if this title was as customizable as the ranks themselves to where like you've got these achievements that unlock things and then as you unlock specific things you achieve this and now the achievement ties into this title and the GM or whatever could be like, okay, this is a, this title. And so you get this like really cool title that like the guild could have voted on or decided on together for some kind of an achievement. And so none of this is, you know what I mean? None of these things really tie into the stuff that we've explained as a cautionary tell, but it definitely gives a sense of like prestige. And I think would be like, you know, aim for retention and investment you know, helps you stand out, but it doesn't really like take away from community. In fact, I think it would bolster it. Just my idea. I think it would too. Um, something that I, I think Delias mentioned in chat earlier, which really stood out to me was the idea of a merit system within the mm, guild. Yeah. Um, 
treat it as like a currency, if you will. And, and you know, you could ha potentially have guild events or the mentorship program, things like that award certain amounts of merit. With that merit, you can then purchase items from maybe you have two guild banks, one where it is for like raid supplies and stuff like that. And another one that's okay, hey, you're a new tune coming into the guild, earn some merit, you can withdraw this item for 100 merit or whatever. And, and you know, it's spent as a currency. And you could also have a varying total that hits your your titles and things like that. I think that would something like that would be really cool. And it promotes activity within the guild to earn mm -hmm. Items from the guild that other higher level people have just, you know, voluntarily put in there. Okay, I'm not going to sell this or I craft this for lobbies. They can, it can go in there, but I'm not just going to give it to somebody so they can turn around and leave the guild and run away. They have, you know, have to hang around a little bit and experience who we are, experience our culture. And, mm -hmm. you know, that that's going to really lead to retention too, I think, something like that. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of this, the merit system, and I would love to see something like that there, right? Again, you gain merit for doing things with the guild. It takes some time investment to actually get that, but it's, you know, non-game breaking stuff, like maybe some buff food or something, right, that you can, you know, cash in on. And again, right, it invests you in the guild in addition to, you know, investing in, you know, the game itself. And I like the idea of like having guild events reward mm. where you could reward merit for it. Like I, I think yeah. of in game guild events being like a modular thing where you can be like, okay, we need to go out and get these amount of items or kill these things or craft these items or run a caravan from here to there, sign up for it, participate, and you get merit based on your performance. The top three people maybe get a multiplier to their bonus. So it incentivizes a little bit of internal competition but it's modular enough that you can customize the system within the, the guild interface. I yeah. think like that'd be really fun. Yeah. I'm a huge proponent of stuff like that. Just the more customization you can give to the leaders in the community to just create. Oh, <laughs> for example, uh, psychophobic says in game justice coins, uh, justice coins, just saying, which is the, the currency here on Twitch you earn for being active. You can kind of redeem them on Twitch for things. And then, you know, that's something that the, creator can reward somebody and specifically for you know people here that are just watching and stuff so or interacting and investing in the community um so yeah like ideas like merit tokens or points or something would be super cool um so we know that's the majority of our show actually and we got one other thing to make sure we we hit on here today friends and that's that ashes of creation has a live stream coming up this friday and in typical format, I'll be live after the live stream is done because we chat about it, collect the collect a bunch of topics from people, questions, um, and we kind of like use that for our following live stream, uh, our podcast live stream. So it is on February 26th at 11 a.m. PST, and the Q and A. Now they you can can you can submit your questions on their forum thread over at ashesofcreation.com. Go to the forums. You'll see it right there. They've got a top slider that basically shows you where it's at. And if you're not too sure, well, we've got it here. We can share it with you too. But the live stream is on Friday at 11 a.m. And the submissions are due the day before at that same time, 11 a.m. PST. So if you want to get a question in, be sure to go and post on that forum thread that they've got listed there up until the following Thursday. And you will potentially be able to get a question in now. There's a good chance that they're probably not going to use it if it's something they've talked about before. If there's something they've answered before, they try to pick ones that are new. And well, it would be great if you contribute one that maybe no one's really asked because those are the kind that we as a community try to get in there. Um, I see something else. Oh, this is ridiculous. So, you know, they have a test going on this weekend. Right that we're aware of a test for people that have access. That's all I can say or know about it. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> Gruntag says, I guess we'll see Friday in the game footage. If our at Simorg has found quote unquote new boss loot. I think that was an, a very, how can I say this playful way of my fellow virtue member trying to say that I had ninja loot. Right. <laughs> Trying to point Luke out Campbell, that I'm just saying, no, well it's so ridiculous. <laughs> the ridiculous. I don't ninja loot. 
There are no no yeah, that's good. She did it to me so many times. <laughs> you don't know. You did, don't don't be honest. Walk in the light. <laughs> <laughs> Cop ninja Ventari's call me to look, man. I that is this is the final question then, right? Like, what are we hoping to see? Because there is a test going on right now. Usually they do show us some footage. Um, everybody that's currently playing right now, like you know, none of the people can really talk about it can't share anything it's it's all quiet which is why you won't see people sharing it streaming it talking about it because well it's nda it's non-disclosure agreement we can't do any of that Mm -hmm. but usually after there's been one uh, a test the team does usually get some footage and show it off so is there anything that we're kind of hoping to see anything i want to see 40 level 10s take on those uh two ancient bosses (laughs) that'd be cool that would be mm-hmm. right. That would be All right. So basically, Naval combat is a thing as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that would be great. Oh, look, horrendous is Stufferton's 3D modeling revealed. LOL. Oof. <laughs> ah, Gruntex says, I'd love to see some node footage if it exists in the alpha yet. Just simple stuff. I realize nodes have minimal advancement now. Um, yeah, and Ventarian says, I'd love to see some test footage. That's all I'm really expecting. Yeah, anything they want to show us. Yeah, it's that's it, right? Like, what what can they show us? I'm I'm just hoping that we do get to see something. It would be great to see a, a group of people taking on the ancients instead of the you know the the devs using GM hacks. <coughs> Stephen, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> it comes from a place of love, really. It does. <laughs> It would just be interesting to see the scale, like 40 bodies on that mountaintop versus the few, like when, when, when one of them charges just to see like the scatter of bodies that go flying <laughs> off the flying cliff. Off like, the cliff. I just, yeah. yeah, it'd be great. Uh, forget it. Yeah, man. Like Lord of the Rings when <laughs> Sauron's just like, you know, all the bodies oh, yeah. like, uh, up in the air. It's like, <laughs> great. You shall not pass. That's it. <laughs> just, just pop. You're done, though, son. Though, oh man, gentlemen, yeah, I don't care if they kill him or not. That's relevant. Yeah, you just want to see bodies fly. It's gonna be like perfect, perfect time for a little bodies. Hit the Same floor. reason we watch NASCAR, right? Oh, right. <laughs> Yo, man, gentlemen, it's been a great show. Everybody hanging out here. Thanks for all the love today. Thanks for joining us today. It's always a pleasure. Look forward to hanging out with all of you here around the Central Flame this week and into Friday before our next show where we're going to grab all those questions and thoughts and comments up from everybody. Before we wrap this show up, gentlemen, let's ensure that you let everybody know your own domains where they can find you and catch you when you're not on this show. We'll start Daedalus. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at The Ashen Herald and on YouTube, youtube.com slash C slash The Ashen Herald. And... Murder Bunny Faisal. You guys can find me on Twitch as Faisal108 and on Twitter as Bagel108. And Half Tilt. You guys can find me over on Twitter at Half underscore Tilt and on Twitch and YouTube both at Half Tilt Gamer. And you can find me right here on this channel pretty much all the time. But I'm not doing the everyday thing, which is great. So I have days off like tomorrow. So I'll be back on Tuesday and uh, we'll be doing some Ashes chat. Look for the stuff and things. Ooh, ooh, coming up this week. I'm so stoked about this, man. Like, ah, the fact that no one's touched this. It's just like tasty. But with that being said, friends, it might be the end of today's show, but I want to make sure that everybody's listening, watching, wherever you're at. Remember, you don't have to be on the round table to be a Pathfinder. In fact, all of you who engage in the show, listen to it, contribute to the conversations, whether it's live or otherwise, that makes you a Pathfinder. We're stoked to have you here. Got to give a big shout out to all of you for all the support, the panel here, my friends here that are Pathfinders on this round table every week, and to Atreba Studios, who's working on the game we are all waiting for, right? The Dragon Will Chase and the home we are all looking forward to stepping into in the future through those divine gateways. Friends, until next week, Live your best lives. Stay safe out there. And as always, walk in the light. We'll see you very soon next week. Bye, everybody. Take care, everybody. Later, everyone. Take care.